everyone, my name is Reed, and I'm an aeronautical engineer for Lockheed Martin. I've been working in this job for about four years now, and I've worked as a stress engineer on our fixed wing platforms. In this role, I've made sure that our modifications for our aircraft were structurally sound and that they could withstand the use of our customers. If you clicked on this video, you may be familiar with National Engineers Week, or more specifically, Engineers Day at the University of Kentucky. If you've been to our events in the past and have stopped by our Lockheed Martin booth, you may be familiar with this. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own miniature rubber band helicopter. Throughout the video, I'll be teaching you about the basic aerodynamical principles that act on aircraft and how differently airplanes and helicopters handle them. Now let's lift off. All right, so there are two main ways that you can go about getting the materials that you need for this experiment. You can either get each individual item online and at a grocery store, or you can just buy a kit, like this one. This kit was made by STEM Inventions, and it has about a quantity 10 of everything that you need. Lockheed Martin is an affiliate with STEM Inventions. I just personally think it's a very easy buy at $20 on Amazon.com and it gives me room to experiment multiple times and if you have any siblings it gives them the room to experiment with you. Now what you get in this little kit is a sheet of instructions, 10 propellers, and 10 little hooks that go on the bottom of popsicle sticks, popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and little sticky pads that go in the back of the popsicle sticks for your helicopter body. And at the very bottom of the box, it comes with a stencil pad of generic helicopter bodies and multiple sheets of colored index paper so you can try cutting out your own. Now, if you're not going to get a kit like this one, you will need to buy index paper. And if you don't have these little sticky pads, you can buy tape. You'll need rubber bands, popsicle sticks, and if you don't have these little hooks to go on the bottom of the popsicle sticks, you can buy paper clips. The only hard thing to buy are these propellers, and I found that you can only get them in quantities of 10 online. So that's another reason why I opted for getting a kit like this one. At a minimum, you will need a pair of scissors and a pen or pencil to draw the body outline on your index cards. Once you have everything that you need taken out of the box or set up on a placement like this one, you need to take each item out of the bag. Once you have everything that you need set up, it's time to get building. So since we have two different methods of putting this together, I'm going to show you each. That's why I have two of everything set up. So first, if you didn't buy the kit and you're going to use a paper clip, you want to take the larger side of the paper clip and tape that against the popsicle stick. You want it tightly wound as such. If you're using the hook from the kit, next you put that in the hook face down. Once you have the hooks attached, you can attach the body of the aircraft. Now you can cut it out of the index cards right here, or you can have them already set up like such. So with this one, you'd use tape to tape the body of the aircraft to the popsicle stick. If you're using the sticky pad from the kit, press them against the body like this. That way it makes it easier to put it against the popsicle stick. Next, it's time to put on the propeller. If you bought one of the propeller kits from Amazon, they should fit on the popsicle sticks very easily, like that, in each case. Once the propellers are attached, you hook the rubber bands to each of the hooks at the top and bottom. And 
once you've done that, you're done. Now, something to watch out for with the paperclip method. If the rubber band is too big, the paperclip is too big, or they're both too big, it's not going to be a tight fit. So the metal right here for the propeller, if that isn't tightly against this, it's just going to free spin, and it's not going to be controlled by the rubber band. The easiest way to fix this is to get a smaller rubber band, or just push the paperclip down a little bit until you feel a bit of tension in the rubber band, like such. That way it'll be held on nice and snug. Next, you want to start winding it up, and at a certain point it'll start to pop a little bit. It'll start to wind up on itself, and that's where it starts to double coil. And if you want to take it a step further, you can keep going a little bit. It's okay to experiment with how much you wind this up. So I'm going to keep going just a little more. And once you get that done, you hold it vertically, make sure it's pointed a little away from you, and you let go of the propeller first, and then the bottom. So one, two. that, you have successfully made your very own miniature rubber band helicopter. With your helicopters done, I'm sure you're very eager to try them out. Now would be a good time to pause the video and take a break. Just remember to turn the blades clockwise, wait until the rubber band starts to double coil, let go of the top, then bottom, and make sure that the helicopter is always pointed away from you at a little bit of an angle. Once you come back, I'll teach you about how helicopters work. See you then. Now, let's learn why the helicopters we made work the way they do. As far as the basic aerodynamic principles acting on our aircraft, we have weight, which is the load of the propeller, the body of the aircraft, and if it were a real aircraft, the crew inside of it would be pulling it down. Then we have the thrust produced by the rotation of the blades. Once you let go of that, the thrust is generated. Next, you have lift. That is the upward force pushing this helicopter up. And next, you have drag which is the body of the aircraft pushing against the air horizontally. Now, remember what I said earlier when you're spinning the propellers? If you were to let go of the bottom first and then the top, or you just let go of both of them at the same time, the weight of the whole helicopter is going to pull it down. Because you aren't letting go of the propeller first, you're not generating enough thrust to lift the helicopter. So it just falls straight back down. For the helicopter to fly upwards, it must generate the force of lift. To do that, the rotary blades are designed to be airfoils, which are shapes that create more lift than drag. The blades are more curved on the top than they are on the bottom. This allows air to move faster over the top of the blades and causes the air pressure to decrease. Whereas, it's generally flatter on the bottom, so the air moves slower and causes the pressure to be higher. This is the basic definition of Bernoulli's principle, and this air pressure difference is what generates lift. Helicopters and airplanes are pretty different aircraft, but the way they generate lift is the same because they're both generating it from their respective airfoils. On an airplane, the airfoils are the fixed wings on the side of the aircraft and they're dependent on how fast the plane is moving to generate enough speed. Whereas for a helicopter, it is dependent on how fast the rotary blades are moving, which is generating the lift from the blades. Last, but definitely not least, the main force acting on the helicopter is drag. When it's flying up in the air, the horizontal drag from the air is being pushed against the aircraft body. It's one of the most important parts of this experiment because without this body, this would not lift off the ground very easily. And to demonstrate that, you can see that with just a propeller and a popsicle stick. If you don't have 
the helicopter body attached to this popsicle stick, almost all of the energy is being wasted spinning the popsicle stick because there is no horizontal drag acting on this. So it's not going to lift up pretty high. Another part of this is that the size and shape of this body heavily impact how the helicopter performs. You want to have a good amount of drag acting against the aircraft so it isn't wasted in the popsicle stick, but you also don't want it to be too heavy. For example, you could tape an entire sheet of paper against a popsicle stick and it'll create a lot of drag, but it also creates a lot of weight. So even though this is double coiled and it's going to keep it pretty stable horizontally, it's going to weigh it down too much for it to take off and it just hovers roughly where it is. Maybe you want to try the exact opposite of a sheet of paper. How about cutting that down quite a lot and making it long and thin? That surely reduces the weight and has a good amount of drag. Well, not necessarily. See, the body in the center is thick enough in certain spots to create more horizontal drag, whereas this one is pretty thin and it's not thick enough to create enough horizontal drag to make this stabilized. So it's pretty close to the propeller on a popsicle stick without any paper. So see, with everything that we've learned so far, it's very important to balance out the weight, the thrust, the lift, and the drag to make your helicopter fly efficiently. While we're still on the topic of drag, you may have noticed that the helicopter body rotates a little bit when it lifts off into the air. That is due to Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when the helicopter blades are turning counterclockwise, the body is starting to turn clockwise. Due to the fact that this is just a simple piece of paper, you can't implement a tail rotor like an actual aircraft. So when you have a tail rotor, it's generating thrust in the horizontal vector to keep it more stabilized and straight. Without it, you're going to notice that the body is just going to continually turn clockwise until it comes down pretty quickly. I hope you enjoyed making your very own miniature rubber band helicopter, and you learned a lot about how these aircraft work. I encourage you to try cutting out different body shapes and maybe adding on an extra rubber band to make twice the thrust. If you're looking for more experiments to do on this Engineers Week, check out the other videos that we have posted on the website. Thanks for tuning in. At Lockheed Martin, we're on a mission. Your mission. When millions of people are counting on you, you can count on us. To build the impossible, to invent the inconceivable, and solve every problem with speed and reliability. Every mission is an expedition of the greatest importance, both to you and to us.